when the evening sun goes down If I never have a fancy car to carry me downtown And if the clothes I wear are not in style And they have a patch or two Don't feel sorry for me, brother Cause I'm only passing I'm going to a city where money won't buy a thing Where my feet will walk on streets of gold And I'll hear the angels sing No more worries about tomorrow And the sorrows that it might bring Where my Jesus is waiting for me And money won't buy a thing meager pay while I walk this earth below to make an honest living for the ones that I love so with my eyes fixed on heaven I'll press on toward the prize and look forward to the blessed day I'll meet my Savior in the sky I'm going to a city where money won't buy a thing Where my feet will walk on streets of gold And I'll hear the angels sing No more worries about tomorrow And the sorrows that it might bring Where my Jesus is waiting for me And money won't buy a thing Where my Jesus is waiting for me And my money won't buy a thing Hey. Man, praise God, everybody. This is yours truly, the Evangelist Willie Grizzle from the House of Prayer Radio Ministries. I hope today that you're... Well, hold on there. Praise God. Amen. Let's stop that. Praise God. Amen. I hope today that you're uh, doing fine. I hope that uh, this Christmas morning that you are uh, serving God, our Lord Jesus Christ. And remember, the reason why we celebrate Christmas, amen, is not because of the gifts or money or the all the goodies we get. It's for serving our mighty king, amen, and uh, remembrance of his uh, birth. Amen. That when he walked this earth, praise God, that uh, we would uh, be obedient in the word of God and uh, to remember that he came. Amen. He came uh, early one morning and uh, walked in this flesh. He came into a virgin woman. Praise God. And uh, we in that we need to remember us in the heart every year and every day. Amen. Praise God. So, um, brothers and sisters, we got some testimonies that Brother Boyd has called in. And, uh, you know, probably you're thinking right now, Willie, why are you having a Christmas service? Well, this is the day of the Lord. Amen. And uh, I just feel it in my heart that we just need to send the joy and the love. The ones out there that doesn't uh, have a family or don't know where the next meal is coming from, but we need to be always be given spiritual food amen that uh if somebody is lost out there that hears the word maybe consider our lord jesus christ as our lord and savior and change the pattern they're on right now because you know that road is wide that leads to destruction amen but you know god's going to take care of it all if you'll just Obey God and make an altar in your heart this very Christmas and get the greatest gift of all, and that's salvation. So, brothers and sisters, uh, I hope that you uh, hear it live or archived today and uh, just just continue to pray for me and the Lord. And the Lord, that uh, he would uh, help you in your life, your finances, your health, but most of all, salvation. 
So, brothers and sisters, uh, listen to this testimony from Brother Boyd. Hello, Brother Willie. I love you, and I'm praying for you. God bless you. This is Brother Boyd London in Idaho, and uh, we thank you for the prayers for all of us here. And I'm just going to call in and say a prayer for us all. Father, I love you with all my heart, mind, and soul. I want to come to you and pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for Jesus dying on the cross for our sins and for our sicknesses and diseases and to set us free from sin. It says in the Bible, we'll know the truth, and the truth will set us free. It says in Matthew 8, 17, that Jesus took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. I want to pray for anyone hearing this who has sicknesses and diseases and ailments in their lives, for you to touch us and heal us. I'm claiming the total healing of those food allergy problems and miracles so I can go over to the Philippines and see Edna and have our wedding there. We know that Luke 18, 27 says the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. His sister Shirley is still feeling sick. I claim her healing right now by the stripes and wounds in the name of Jesus. A brother Willie and his wife and daughter, if they need healing, I claim their healing. I claim our healing in the name of Jesus. And I claim for those who are need healing from sins and addictions, that they are healed, that they will know the truth, and the truth will set them free. Thank you, Father, for healing and for helping us all from sins, from sicknesses and diseases. It says in Am 1-7, the Lord is good, a refuge in times of trouble. He cares for those who trust in him. We trust in you, Father. Thank you for being our refuge in times of trouble, for healing us and delivering us. For those facing trials and challenges, thank you for delivering them from our trials and challenges. We lost my dad, Roy London, here, and we're having some financial problems he left us with medical bills and different things. Please deliver us from our trials. Please help Brother Willie, his wife and daughter, with any financial problems or trials or challenges they're facing with their family there. Please help us all and deliver us from our trials and challenges. Philippians 419 says, My God will supply all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus, and we know that you're supplying our needs and helping us. Psalm 55, 22 says, cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. Thank you, Father, we can cast all our cares and worries on you. Philippians 4, 6 says, we don't have to worry about anything or be anxious, but we can cast our cares to you. And I thank you, Father, that you can believe that your challenges and healing us from our sicknesses and diseases and healing us from sin. If anyone this does not have Jesus as Lord and Savior, please help them. Please help them, Father, to feel your love and the love of Jesus who died on the cross for them and help them to turn their life over to Jesus. Um, there are your graces for everyone, for anyone who wants to repent of sin and turn to Jesus died on the cross for them. Their darkest sin is dark for your life. There's hope, peace, there's a second chance through Jesus because Jesus died on the cross for our sins and anyone can repent and turn well and take care of the needy people and go make disciples of all nations and teach them to obey everything and baptize them from the Great Commission. Help us to be able to help others know the good news of Jesus. And I love you so much, Father. I thank you for healing and helping us all. I pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Bless all.
Thank you, Brother Boyd, for calling in. Uh, dedicated testimony giver, amen, uh, and, uh, and a preacher and a uh, a good prayer warrior, amen, awesome prayer warrior. Hello, Sister Shirley. Merry Christmas to you. Uh, I know it's Christmas Day, and uh, I went me and my wife and little Holly, we got done opening her presents, and and uh, while they were playing with their new toys, I guess you could say, uh, I just had it on my heart to have a service today and just open the Word of God to ones out there that uh, have nothing. Amen. You know, a lot of times that uh, a lot of people will say this and that and the other, and but they forget about the poor and the sick and the needy. And, you know, uh, they need our help more than ever. Amen. And... Uh, we all got people in our life that needs prayer, that needs clothes, and needs food. Amen. But, you know, this this holiday season, this Christmas season, we need to open our eyes and see what gift we can give to others. Amen. It's not for my personal finances or nothing like that. I, want, I just want to see people activate the Christ in them. Amen. You know, yeah, you hear a lot of preaching going on about uh being sanctified being holy well first thing you got to get holy you got to go to the holy one amen and you know i was looking in a script uh, scriptures here in psalms uh, 147 7 through 11 it says this sing unto the lord with thanksgiving sing praises on to he uh, on to him the harp of a on our God, and who covers the heavens with clouds and prepares the rain from the earth, and we we make glass to grow upon the mountains. He gives us the beast his food, and he, and the young ravens, while which cry, he delights not in the strength of the horses. He takes not pleasure in the legs of men. The Lord takes pleasure in the that the fear him and those who hope is in mercy. Amen. See, to this season, this this very day, we should be given mercy. Amen. That uh this time of peace and glory of our heavenly Father, we need to be standing up and obeying God. And uh you know, me and my wife were fixing to go out to her her sisters and have christmas dinner but you know somebody out there today ain't having christmas dinner somebody's in a house probably ain't got no heat no food and while we're sitting around um talking about good things how about we do this how about we get up and do it amen praise god that um we need to stand on the word of god every second of, of every day of our life see we're not promised tomorrow amen we're promised this very moment this very hour because any moment any second god could take our life from us praise god but you know a lot of people today wants to play russian roulette with god amen they want to uh, put on a show they want to put on a um a uh, happy-go-lucky thing sometimes. But let me tell you something. God ain't looking for rock stars. He's looking for faithful servants. See, one day, I'm going to lay down this walk of life. But till then, I'm going to serve my Lord Jesus. You know, I was sitting here just, uh, I was in the house and watching my little girl playing that little, some kind of crazy uh, Lego game on a xbox 360 and i was watching angie looking over her material things what she got and i just realized there's something there's so many families that ain't blessed as much as i am amen see 
There's somebody on the street side right now that is looking for something to eat. Or somebody, there's an elder's people out there on the side of the road that's cold ain't got no place to stay or eat this very day. See, Jesus Christ, amen, he didn't have a place to go either. When Mary was uh, uh, with child with Jesus, they put her in a barn, put him in a put Jesus in a feeding stall, amen, a manger. See, now, we need to understand our beliefs, our faith, our understanding of the Word of God. But, you know, a lot of people has heard the story, but they've not applied it to their hearts, amen. But, you know, we're, we are held accountable for the knowledge that we do know. Now, let me tell you something. There is a lot of people out there that do a lot of things in God's name that are ignorant in the Word. Now, I'm not saying stupid or foolish or anything like that, but they're ignorant in the Word. Amen? They've heard somebody else preach about it. They've heard somebody else talk about it. But they have not really searched the Scripture, what the Word of God says. See, one day, everything that you know will be judged upon. Amen. And, uh, you know, as an evangelist, I'm a, I'm, both, I'm a call and ordained by the Lord Jesus Christ to uh, shake and stir your spirits. Amen. Lift your spirits where you're down. Give you strength where you're weak. But, you know, you can't pick and choose what day to do that amen is it because uh see we got to stay activated every day amen doesn't matter if it's christmas new year fourth july uh labor day um uh, groundhog day it doesn't matter if what holiday it is see every day belongs to god because every day is made by god you see he has spared this earth for so long but you know, one day he's going to come collect his bill. See, he's given us grace and mercy and understanding and love. And he's given us open day miracles. But a lot of people has looked over that and thought, thinking it's just a coincidence. But let me tell you something. There is no such thing as coincidence in the eyes of God. There's a reason for everything. When you see somebody's car broke down, there's a reason for that. And a lot of people will cause and effect. They may not might need to take better care of the car. There is no such thing as coincidence. See, that car might stop, and you might have to ask to see if uh, they need help. There might be a reason for that. They might be lost, or they need a tender word of God. And God has sent you that way to send the word. Amen. Or a child on the side of the street looking for his mom and dad. Amen. And you see them and you take them to them. Their parents might be lost. And you bring the word of God that something that God have you to say that could change the situations of life. Amen. See, we're on this earth for a certain reason. It's like Jesus Christ. He didn't come down here to glorify himself. He come to show the proof of our God. Amen. To show us the strength how to build the kingdom of heaven through his word. But you know, a lot of people just try to keep God in the Bible instead of in their hearts. Amen. But you know, one day that's going to come to a halt. Amen. See, we're all going to have to pay one day for the deeds, good and bad. And you know, this Christmas morning, it hurts me to see my brothers and sisters cry because they can't see their family, because of other people's situations or other understandings. See, this is the biggest problem with the church today. They won't come 
to somebody that's hurting. They, well, they want you to come to their church or come to their worship center or come to their building. Let me tell you something. God didn't make us to be that way. If you, if I'm hurting, my brother and sisters both know it. I'm hurting. Amen. See, we're the body of Christ. I might be a hand. My foot should know that I'm hurting. Amen. See, this is what it is to stand and walk for Jesus Christ. We should feel when our, one of our brothers and sisters are hurting. You know, it hurts me so bad to see how somebody is so desperate to reach out for God, but somebody uses theology on them instead of the Word of God. Well, this means that. That means this. No. It means what it says, says what it means. See, this Christmas morning, I hope that you uh, are taking this in. Because, you know, the house of prayer here is praise for the ones that need our Lord. If you come here to pray for a blessing of money, well, sorry, I can't help you there. But I can tell you about a man that can bless you and turn a little life. If you're looking to be uh, lifted up, to be be known, you have come to the wrong place. This is the house of the Lord, the house of prayer. See, I'm the minister here. Yeah, I have not many people come, but the ones that do come are dedicated to God. You know why they're dedicated? Because they want to have a kingdom and a crown to wear one day when we leave this earth. See, I have some. I have uh, four people that's in this ministry. It's me, my wife, Holly, and Sister Janet uh, Minor. She is. Uh, I I give her opportunity to ask her to see if she would like to be the treasurer of the house of prayer. And without skipping a beat, she said, yes, I would. See, I'm out on a mission hunting for gifts. Amen. Get Not physical gifts, but gifts that uh, people have. Like Sister Minor, she has a gift of writing. Amen. And uh, writing down things she hears and sees. Amen. Like my wife, she has a gift of hearing... Uh, uh, seeing prayers, and she sends me. I got a, a book over here right now full of prayers that I pray for every day. And uh, she keeps out here for somebody that needs food that I make a way where I can get them food. And no, they don't pay tithes here, but what they do pay is worth more than silver and gold. It's the love of God. It's prayers. It's understanding. It's listening. See, this that's what it means to follow God. You must to hear that that pure voice today, brothers and sisters. It ain't just that uh my voice or um uh, your preacher's voice or your pastor's voice. It's the wo the voice of God. Because the voice it says clearly in the scriptures, you follow the voice you know. You know, there's a lot of voices, a lot of spirits out there today that will lead you in to destruction. But there's only one voice that will lead you in to heaven. And that's our Lord Jesus Christ. So, brothers and sisters, this Christmas Eve, I want you to understand one thing. There's a gift given this very day, 2,000 years ago. Amen. 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ come to the flesh through a virgin woman, bring in salvation, love, mercy, and clarifications from our Heavenly Father. You know, a lot of people don't quite understand that. He didn't come to be a rock star. He didn't come to be a fleshy king. He come to be our Lord and Savior. The king above all kings. The great and holy power of all things. 
See, Jesus Christ gets put down so much. Amen. When you mention the name of Jesus, you see even Christian folks today, when you name mention the name of Jesus, they know the power of God upon that name. They know that name can heal. They know that Holy Ghost could come upon them. And if there's any sin in their life, they're going to be known about it. Amen. So there is, there is no secret in the eyes of God. You can't hide nothing. And if you're real true with the body of Christ and the body of God, amen, and he's your cornerstone, you know the liar will be known. The thief will be known. The hypocrite will be known. See, what your heart desires, your lips will speak. But if you listen to a lot of people speaking, they speak about finances. They speak about the finer things of this world. See, I don't want nothing of this world. I want my Jesus. I want to be, be found worthy to stand in his presence when I leave this earth. Man might never recognize me. I might not have these big stages like these fancy preachers do. But as long as the Lord's willing, I have this mic. And this is my platform to serve my Lord. And you could do this too, brothers and sisters. All you got to do is you could call that testimony number 270-681-8098. I'll share this platform with you. But just obey God. You know, we wait around so many people to make a decision if they're going to serve God. Let me tell you, there's going to be a decision one day when the old man death will have to die. I mean, die, not on life support, not hiding in the corner. He has to die. You must be born again. Or you'll never see the kingdom of God or God. You must be pure of heart to see the face of God. Let me ask you today, are you pure at heart? Or are you playing the adult, I know this and I know that. And that's all I know. Let me tell you something. I'll tell you right now. I might be one of the ignorantest men on earth. But let me tell you something. I love Jesus. Because I know he's the name above all names. See, Danny Patrick can't get me into heaven. Frankie Calvert can't get me into heaven. Eddie Chaney, Chris Chaney, all, the, all these preachers out here today can't get me into heaven. But I know God can, and my Lord Jesus can. My question for you today, did you open the, grit, the gift of God today? Did you open the Word of God and study it out? Did you mention to your family today about Jesus Christ? Did you tell your little children, your big children, about the greatest gift that God ever gave us? Or did you just care about what they got you at Walmart or the mall or wherever? I mean, no, let's be honest today. This is the day of the Lord. Amen. We need to be be diligent in the word of God. We need to quit playing pity patty games with God's word. We need to be serious. We need to put away our difference in, difference differences. Amen. We need to serve God. Now, if you got a nod against our brother, Take it to him, get it over with. If he accepts it, amen. If he don't, pray for him, move on. So we ain't got time to sit around and pitter pat on about silly things of this world. Because this world's going to burn one day. You know that $20 you got in your back pocket? It's going to go away one day. It's going to be thrown. See, paper and money and silver and gold was going to be worthless one day. So it talks about in the scriptures that people is going to be throwing that in the road to be burned. Let me tell you something. If God has blessed you in financials, why don't you help a ministry, help your neighbor, help your 
uh, family somehow that they're in a strain right now and give them the blessings of God and the Word of God. You know, we need to stand up and take and proclaim the Word of God whenever we are awake. If we're able to open our mouth, we need to be praising God. Because, you know, one day God's going to take it all away. Amen. You know, there's somebody right now in the hospital who's on life support. Amen. And, you know, they're every second, they're counting precious because they could leave this earth at any moment. You know, this is what God is telling me, that we need to think about what Christmas really is this morning. Is Christmas something that you wrap up, or is it something that you give out that doesn't even have a wrap, and it's the Word of God? See, we need to understand where we stand with God. This Christmas morning, you're probably getting ready to go eat some dinner. But I want you to think about and send a prayer up for the ones that ain't even got food to eat. You're probably putting on some of your best wardrobe to impress the people you're going to go see. But there's someone right now that ain't even got a coat to wear. You probably got your house decorated up all Christmas festival and stuff. Somebody ain't even got a place to lay their head. We got to understand what's more important in this walk of life. Is it the material things or is it the Lord's word? See, we're all going to be judged by what we know of of the Lord. We got to answer for everything that he tells us. You see, brothers and sisters, I didn't. Uh, I didn't know what the Lord had me to say. He just told me turn it on, and put the title of Christmas morning service. But you know, we need to open our mouths today and thank God, Amen. That you got to see another Christmas. You get to see your family. You got food on your table, shoes on your feet, roof above your head. Because there's so many that doesn't and doesn't. But you have an opportunity to change that, don't you? You have an opportunity to open your house and invite somebody in to have supper with you. You have somebody to come and uh, you can feed them physical and give them spiritual food too you know somebody right now that that needs clothes but they need that uh, clothing of god too amen that grant that gown and that crown of glory see if you want to find somebody that helps somebody i want i'll tell you what you need to do You need to go to your bathroom right now and look in the mirror. You need God more than anything. You can see you can't do nothing on your own. See, God strengthens us. He gives us knowledge to do his will. But you know, so many people today think, well, I ain't got no finances. Or I ain't got this. I only got one of this. Well, let me tell you something. If they take your coat, give them the other one. Amen. See, all one day, this is all going to come to an end. And as me, as the evangelist here, I'm about to steer your hearts. I'm about to shake that bone inside of you that heart that stone heart that once beat for jesus but has stones building around it i guess you say that i'm the chiseler amen to break him rocks away and let love in see brothers and sisters i didn't come 
to this service for me. I came for the ones that need God tonight, this morning. Wherever live or archives listening, you guys on the sideline, uh, you need a little touch from God. Well, reach out and grab Him right now. He wants you to touch Him. He wants to hear your prayers. He wants you to hear you pray for others. He wants you to make an action to get out and obey Him. See, I could right now I could be anywhere as I wanted to be and just having a good old time and just eating and laughing and all that. But it hurts me so much that so many people would rather be doing that than serving God. But I'll tell you this much. One day, oh, one day, they will answer for their deeds. And then it'd be too late to repent. Amen. Brothers and sisters, if you take anything from this service, remember that Jesus Christ does love you. And if you have a nod against me, come to me. Let's let's break bread. Let's get it over with. But you just sit there and linger in and say, Well, I'll wait for somebody else. Well, let me tell you something. You already missed your blessing. Amen. So this Christmas morning, I asked you, open the gift of God. Accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Let him lift you up. Let him bring you from that old valley that you're in and put you on a mountain. Remember, there's others out there that need your prayers, need your financial help. But most of all, they need the love of God in their life. How about this Christmas? You give them that. Take your take time out of your busy life today and obey God. Here's a um, another testimony from Brother Boyd. Hello, uh, Brother Willie. I love you and I'm praying for you. God bless you and your family, and Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to all of you. And uh, thanks so much for keeping this uh, line going. I'd like to encourage people to call 270-681-8098 and share your testimony. They overcame by the word of their testimony. He goes 312 through 13, tells us to encourage our brothers and sisters daily. I've been trying to call into this line daily when I can, and I've been calling a lot into our other Saving America line. Uh, we've been doing a program on there. They're going to go to the nursing homes and give out CDs and stuff. So I've been calling in a lot of different prayers and things for the elderly in the nursing homes. And uh, my testimony is, you know, it's been a tough time for us here. My dad, Roy London, uh, had a bad stroke and uh, got bad infections and passed away on us recently. And he did a lot to help out my family and the church here. So it's been hard for all of us here. And uh, we appreciate the prayers. And my mom, Jerry, got so worn out. She got a bad case of bronchitis and pneumonia and just about died herself. We've been taking care of her at the house. The prayers are helping her. She's doing quite a bit better. She says, Merry Christmas to you all and sends your love. And my mom, Jerry, thanks you for the prayers. You know, taking care of my sister Ann here who weighs 500 pounds and has schizophrenia. My grandma, Naomi, uh, is in a uh, nursing home right now herself. She got pretty weak and uh, we've been, you know, having to visit her and take care of her, but the prayers are helping her, too. And Grandma Naomi's 95, and she's getting stronger, and she's doing a lot better. So she thanks um, everyone who's been praying for I don't know over at the Saving America line in place. They've been saying a lot of prayers for my Grandma Naomi, and also and the prayers are helping her. So that's my testimony. We've been through some challenges here, but the prayers are helping us, and we're going to overcome. And, you know, I had a hard time this Christmas season getting people to want to help the orphan kids. We were doing a thing to try to help the orphan kids for Christmas and help other people, and people seem just not want it to want to do it this Christmas, and even worse than last Christmas. So, uh, uh, you know, I'd like to encourage people to try to do something for Jesus this Christmas season to help someone, whether it's an orphan or widow or go to the hospital and pray for someone, go to the nursing homes, help the elderly, sing some songs to the elderly like we did here at uh, Give them some cards or go pray, say a prayer with them. It makes a huge difference. So uh, anyhow, you know, try to do something to help other people. It makes a big difference in their life this Christmas season. I mean, if you help someone and pray for them and share the love of Jesus with them, they may even 
We end up getting Jesus as a personal Lord and Savior and getting saved. So we don't forget about sharing the love of Jesus with others this Christmas season. And John 13, 34 to 35 tells us to go show the love of Jesus to the world, to show that we're his disciples. Let's go show the love of Jesus to others and try to help someone this Christmas and holiday season. And uh, we love you all. We're praying for you. And thanks for the prayers for all of us. Merry Christmas. Amen. God bless all. Amen. Thank you, Brother Boyd. And Merry Christmas to you and your family. I pray that Lord will help you financially, spiritually, physically, but most of all, with grace and mercy. Remember Brother Boyd's family, that uh, he's been in a long battle. And how true it is, you know, a lot of people are selfish. Amen. I, I'm just going to be blunt with it. They are. They're selfish. They got all kinds of things. They got a garage full of junk and stuff that, that other people could use. But they keep it for a rainy day. Let me tell you, one day, that rainy day is going to come to end. Amen. That you, when you pass on, somebody's going to get it. Why don't you do be a blessing today and give it to someone else right now? Because, you know, the world is coming to a bad shape. And God needs his people to stand up and be strong. And be obedient to him. For this Merry Christmas, I asked you, be Christ-like. If God is dwelling within you, let your light shine. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, my time is drawn short. I just want to wish you a Merry Christmas. And what the Lord word had me to say to you, I hope it applies in your heart today. Remember that Jesus Christ died on that rugged cross for you, that you'd be saved from the wickedry of this world and the wrath to come. This is yours truly, Evangelist Willie Grizzle. Keep me in prayer and I'll keep you in prayer. Please pass these services on. Let all your friends and family and your foes hear the word of God. Because, you know, one day, God's come to collect his people. And I want them and God's people to be known that he knows their name. This is yours truly. Merry Christmas. God bless you all. Let the Lord be with you in season and out of season. This is Brother Grizzle signing off. God bless. He counts the stars one and all, knows how much sand is on the shore, sees every sparrow that falls. The mountains and the sea He's in control of everything Of all creatures great and small He knows my name Every step that I take Every move that I make Every tear that I cry He knows my name Question.